All right, so uh, what I wanted to do here, just, well, it's a little test video just to see uh, if I can transition to regular live streams of painting. But what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to fix a painting as best I can. Uh, and by fix, I mean rather um, fix the sky uh, through multiple glazes with different colors. And I really want to uh, lighten the sky a bit. And when you have whole areas of light, eventually, well, <laughs> the human eye is tricked into believing that all of the foreground and all of the the distant hills are going to uh, be more uh, become darker than they appear. So I have uh, my trusty Liquitex glazing medium, and I just want to demonstrate how simple it is to rather uh, rather well how sort of uh, routine it is to just fix up a painting. Uh, I've already started a little bit with cerulean. So I'm going to basically take a little bit of white and a little bit of cerulean and see what happens. And so I just want to get a quick Just really sort of beat back the distant clouds. And normally I would wipe things off with a rag. But here, I think uh, the glaze will do most of the work. So. And the beautiful thing about glazing, especially with acrylics, is. Um, it really sort of mimics the blendability of oil painting uh, quite nicely. And I'm going to leave that area because that area is going to be yellow. And I really don't want, <laughs> I really don't want to, you know, create a green sky. So just with a, well, semi lint free cloth, you can sort of uh, transition to making those clouds appear and over time it will eventually even out. So I'm going to mix slightly uh, slightly more blue into that because I feel it's it's a bit too purpley. It's kind of grating with the rest of uh, the rest of the scene. And also glazing will give a nice unity to the piece as a whole. So for instance, uh, <laughs> there's a bit too much orange, so you just glaze away and it covers, hmm, it covers a myriad of sins. And I think I'm going to just put a little bit of glaze down here to get more of that sort of ethereal cloud effect. And I don't know if I'm going to keep or I'm going to work on that foliage. But as you can see, the foliage is already popping, so that's good. And already, Frankly, uh, this is the painting I did on the Break the Rules live stream, and I think I'm going to fix up some of that just a tiny little bit because, frankly, the shadows are too, too, too warm, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I was doing there. So I might have to grab. Uh, a blue that's more, you know, more vibrant, which would be phthalo blue. It's more biased towards the green in terms of temperature. So it will, you know, phthalo blue really is the quote unquote electric blue, but I have to make it sort of hazy enough just to create those little dollops of clouds and Hopefully, um, 
I'll be convincing enough with the cloud formation. So now I'm just going to, the ones in the top are a bit darker, so I mix in a little bit of magenta. It's always nice uh, when you have excess paint just to take an empty jar and to just sort of throw it in uh, <laughs> whenever you need it. So I think I'm just going to only suggest the cloud formations there. I really just want to make that basic shape pop. So a little bit more white. Uh, and as you sort of uh, mask a lot of those, a lot of those shadows, some of them will come out because of glazing. As you can see, you can still see a bit of that darker sort of, uh, that darker brownish violet but as you uh, add more layers and scrub more layers out, uh, eventually uh, everything becomes a bit more unified. In this piece, it really is your typical uh, Venetian landscape of you know the sky being very pronounced in terms of the cools and the blues, but the foreground having that sort of popping foliage effect. And so here I needed to really lighten things up in a shadow area. And that will also create more of a unity within the sky. Uh, I kind of went too crazy with the white. And it's a bit too biased towards the uh, the oranges. Not the oranges, the, the reds. I want a more sort of orangey feel there. Uh, so let me just fix up that cloud a bit. Make it a bit more darker, get some more, uh, a warm blue, which is of course, uh, ultramarine. And look at that, look at that. So that has a bit more of a unity there. And I might just put a little bit just to make, make those pop. Uh, I think I might have to beat back some of that shadow just to see those brush strokes so there we go uh, it's a bit it's still poppy but like it's rather sorry poppy it's still popping that that sort of vibrant uh mauve that dark mauve uh but i think the piece is much more unified now that I've incorporated more, I've sort of shifted a lot of it towards the blues. Uh, and I'm really sort of trying to beat back the, dr the dramatic, uh, the dramatic shifts in both temperature and tone. Uh, so up here, you always want, the sky is chroma, so you always want the top to be a bit darker. course and well, that's like a random it's like a random little brush stroke there so I'm going to have to uh, create more of a unity there and just scumble it in just scrub it in so now the cloud is more submerged um, within the landscape, but I might have to bring out some of those lights that were there. Okay, let's see what I can do. Yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. And get some cadmium red or rather uh cadmium orange and just create those little those little dollops of color there look at that. there we go 
just a suggestion. I might have to uh, beat them back and put more of that blue. Switching brushes just for convenience because I neglected to uh, set up my water on the other side. <laughs> so, oh, that's a bit too. That's uh, I need a bit more, a bit more white. Okay, so now I'm just plopping in those highlights. Uh, I'm really just trying to. Actually, I should put some more cerulean there, and then with the white. There we go. So now the painting has a bit more of a harmonious character to it. Uh, the question is, can I maintain it with uh, adding in, shifting this towards the orange? So just those little impressionistic dollops. Just like Renoir or uh, uh, some of the more, you know, the later American Impressionists, they tended to just, uh, they tended to sort of uh, plop in the clouds just more staccato-like, uh, just not really um, overdoing them because clouds are quite difficult if you really want truly realistic clouds they really uh <laughs> people they think they're easy but they do um take quite a bit of effort because there's so many different shapes uh, and i might have to there we go so i'm still trying to keep with this general direction and by direction, I mean the shape of the brushstroke. That's, again, another uh, great uh, another great insight of the Impressionists uh, relative to, you know, the old masters, the more, uh, the Baroque. Well, the Baroque actually had some uh, directional brushstrokes, but it was more so during the uh, later 19th and 20th century, well, getting into the 20th century, the 18th, 19th century, uh, the age of Impressionism, where you started to see, um, you started to see the shape of the brushstroke and the texture, and with texture comes direction. So you really focus on that sort of uh, an Impressionism, that mimicking of motion that you find. Um, that's sort of, you know, if you've ever looked at, which I mean the whole world has, if you've ever looked at Van Gogh, you can sort of uh, see a lot of that, the way he fundamentally transformed the line in, in the work of art through drawing and through uh, painting, how the line now becomes just as much a part of the piece. It's not just the border, it's not just... Um, it's not just the sort of seamless transitions in a lot of the academic styles of art that they were rebelling against, where you had uh, painters like Bouguereau, where uh, they had very smooth transitions between lines. Uh, the Impressionists, they rebelled against that sort of, uh, that very academic, very clean, very uh, specific way of... Uh, of creating the image, they much ra they much rather uh, they much rather went with the immediate sensation of an image. By that, the immediate you know, hence the name impression, uh, the immediacy of what the eye can see relative to the image, and especially Cezanne. And so that was you know very rebellious at the time because uh, it was the first time art not only was brought outdoors, well, it was brought outdoors before, but it was brought outdoors much easier in terms of 
creating a whole painting on its own, not just studies of nature. Um, it was the first time that an actual study of the effects of light uh, itself and the way an artist interprets that immediate first impression of a painting uh, that was very revolutionary for the time. So, everyone, I mean, it's kind of cliched in, uh, in the art world nowadays because, you know, every, everyone's heard the same, <laughs> the same story about the Impressionists, you know, how revolutionary. But, you know, I am a natural Impressionist. I mean, every Canadian artist uh, has to contend with uh, working under the shadow of the Group of Seven. So, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's sort of, um, it's, it's kind of, it can be joyous, you know, it can be, I, I think, uh, the landscape is sublime in that it's both joyous and terrifying and captures the, uh, totality of human emotions and is, well, nowadays, although I think there's still a greater, um, be ecological awareness of the landscape. Uh, there's more of an emphasis on man's place within nature. Well, human's place within nature. Okay, so. Like Bob Ross said, ready for your bravery test. <laughs> so I'm shifting this over and maybe just a little bit up top there. Just a little hairline. Just to unify things. Uh, and now I'm going to carefully beat it back with a uh, cloth from white. <laughs> white beater. <laughs> oh boy. I remember one time in school. Uh, for those of you who grew up with me that are on my Instagram. You probably uh, maybe remember me getting into trouble this way. I remember one time uh, we had, I think it was vaccinations. And, uh, you know, you had the, the Catholic school uniform. <laughs> and I remember, uh, you know, I had to take my shirt off. Uh, but I had my undershirt, my wife beater. And I remember telling the... Uh, the, the nurse, uh, the vaccination nurse. Actually, I should have protested it now that I thought think of it. But, oh, well, that's another, <laughs> that's another conversation for another day. Um, I remember lifting up my shirt and saying that, well, you know, it's, it's all right if I have to uh, take my uniform shirt off because I have a wife beater underneath. <laughs> and I just said it so casually and automatically. Uh, <laughs> That, uh, and of course, like, she was shocked, right? Like, oh my god, you know, it's like, oh man. Certain things, I guess, you know, to you seem acceptable, but then to other people, <laughs> not so much. Uh, it's the way it was. I don't know. My parents didn't sweat the little things like that. It was more of like, uh, you know, the big things, not like... Uh, well, well, whatever. So now I'm sort of uh, creating... I went too far with the yellow. I might have to beat it back with some more of the blues. But I think that's a really good... Uh, dynam what they call dynamic harmony to the foliage. And I think I'm going to have to... Now that I really made the sky pop... I'm really going to have to sort of shift this to a warmer color and potentially darken it more. So I'm going to take like, I'm, I'm going to sort of break uh, the typical impressionist rules and instead of uh, using the, you know, complementary colors, I think I'm going to incorporate more of the earth tones here uh, just really quickly. So let's see, so I'm going to shift it to the warm, so more cadmium, and I use black, see I'm, I'm more of the, uh, 
I'm more of the opinion of uh, Singer Sergeant. You know, I think black is still like a quick tool that you can use. And uh, I'm warming it with the, uh, the medium yellow. Uh, I use, I tend to like Indian yellow. It's a pretty good warm mid-tone and I'm making it more orangey with uh, the cad yellow. So I'm going to darken some of those shadow areas. And I think that will make things pop a bit more. So. And of course, when you uh, combine a warm yellow with a dark black, uh, it will come up uh, as more of registered as a very dark orange, sorry, very dark green. Uh, black and yellow makes this very earthy, very dark green, which is nice because it's nice to go over um, a lot of the colors that are already present. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, darken up, I'm darkening up those reds, and I might incorporate a bit of the red, and it's all, you know, transparent, so it's not going to... Um, it's not going to create mud because a lot of, you know, artists when they're starting out, they're like, oh, how, why am I creating mud? No, no, mud isn't, mud isn't, um, an earth tone like the dirt. Mud is not, um, because you can get so many beautiful colors out of earth tones and what I'm doing, and of course... You know, I'm really in between that area of Impressionism and Tonalism because I really love that sort of the mature color sensations of Tonalism, that sort of uh, really uh, mashing in color tones, but using a lot of warmth combined with uh, a lot of earth tones and some Impressionistic colors. But really, oh, I neglected to, there's a little brown spots here and there. So I'll just, I'll just knock them in. Even just using a little touch of straight uh, burnt umber. So I really love that tonalistic, um, very dark, very light. But, you know, the darks and the lights are coming together in these different bands. And uh, I really, I really love that. I think that's, um, I think it's good that I'm sort of shifting this more towards the browns because before it was sort of, uh, it wasn't, um, it was jiving, but not really. So here I'm using this very dark green and uh, see, any, any time you use, this is why I love Cerulean because any, any time that you, uh, use uh, phthalo blue like this is why my outdoor palette I just uh got rid of because it's too hard to control outdoors um so it's more of a studio color for me because anytime you uh throw like even just a tiny little bit of phthalo blue in the palette uh just really just shifts every single color towards uh the greens towards the um <laughs> towards the turquoise and the greens. So here I'm just using the uh, edge of the brush to give some nice textures. Um I really just want to stick with the dark greens and I you know, I neglected to uh crop out into uh into the shadows. Uh, I might have to put just some dark blue there. That's what I was trying to do before. There we go. And maybe just a little bit here, just to differentiate, just to create, you know, that that, that tonalistic uh, far off hillside. Just really shift it all. The background, the aerial perspective, the background, shift it all towards the dark blues. There we go. And of course it's harmonious with the clouds Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. We're really uh we're really into it now. 
There we go, just lighting things up. Lightening things up. Lighting things up. Blah! I can't speak when I feel like I have to perform sometimes. <laughs> but it's all in good fun. Alright, that's... Um, it's really... I'm going to have to put some more darks into there. But I'm glad that it's uh, coming together. There we go. And there's also like these little uh, lighter fur spots that... Fern spots that are really uh, complementing the, uh, the firecracker yellows. So in fact, I think I'm going to put... I'm going to beat it back a little bit, but I'm going to put some of that orangish yellow foliage there. Because I really severely beat back what was there before. Uh, just for the sake of, you know, clarifying. See, now there's a separation there between the, uh, the different foliages. And uh, that tree remains the, uh, the firecracker. So... That's pretty good. Uh, all right, I think um, I think I fixed up this painting as far as it can go. I really pushed it. Uh, so this was the painting that I painted live on the Break the Rules stream, and uh, I think I'll call it a well, call it a night. So uh, goodbye.